Hi everyone, welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. Well today we've got a Tammy R model kit to review. This is a Lotus Type 78. It's the 1977 car driven by um, Andretti. And uh, it's one of the uh, Tammy R 112 Big Series uh, kits. Um, so this retails for £110, that's the RRP. I have seen it for sale around £90, so it's quite an expensive kit, so this hat needs to be good for the money. Obviously quite a big kit, but um, that doesn't always mean that uh, it's going to be a good one, so let's get inside and have a look in a moment. So just going around the box very quickly, 112 Big Scale Series, and uh, we've got over here, we've got the radiator, wingtips, brake discs and metal parts, seat belts are all photo etched. Um, the kit itself has been around for quite a while. I think it was originally released around 78 and then it had new parts added in 2008. And this is this year's release, which, as I say, has some new decal bits in and also some photo etch bits. So top here, it says a detailed static display model. Movable suspension incorporates coil springs. We'll see those in a minute, hopefully, if they're in there. Uh, front wheels are linked with a working steering wheel. Realistic DFV engine comes with fuel pipes, ignition cables. I'm struggling to read it because the light's reflecting, sorry. Ignition cable, radiator air duct, um, induction box. Front cockpit cowlings can be removed even after assembly. Again, includes photo etch parts um, to depict brake discs. Radiator core, two types of front and rear wing, wing tips and metal parts for the seat belts. So I'm just repeating what's over here. So again, uh, at the bottom here, ready to assemble precision model kit, detailed scale model for hobbyist age 14 and above. This is not a toy. And finally, the model may vary from uh, the image on the box. Not a bad box. Box art looks pretty good. You know, it's a depiction of the car there. So not too bad. Um, down the bottom corner here, it does give the dimensions of the completed model. So 381 millimetres long, 171 millimetres in width, and 76 millimetres in height. So quite quite a large model, really, when it's complete. Just going around the box very quickly. So on the side here, just seeing if I can get this into shot, we've got a side depiction of Ronnie Peterson's car. So I'm guessing you've got uh, the version of Andretti and Ronnie Peterson in the um, decal pack. Um, so Ronnie Peterson ran the 1978 British Grand Prix. So for the 77 car, it was uh, Andretti and Gunnar Nielsen that ra raced, and then Ronnie Peterson took over in the 1978 British Grand Prix. Um, now, over here, let me, let me just read this bit out to you. So about the Lotus Type 78. The Lotus Type 78 was regarded as the first true wing car in Formula One history. The car featured a sleek and sharp wedge-shaped body and side pontoons with upturned internal upturned wing profiles for greater downforce. This innovative system uh, greatly improved traction, reduced air resistance and provided uh, uh, higher cornering speeds. Throughout the 1977 Grand Prix, the Lotus 78 was driven by Mario Andretti and Gunnar Nielsen. Mario Andretti won, won the uh, United States, States Grand Prix West, the Spanish Grand Prix, French Grand Prix, Italian Grand Prix, while Gunnar Nielsen won the uh, Belgian Grand Prix. The uh, Lotus Type 78 was used until the first half of the 1978 Grand Prix season um, by the resurgent team Lotus. And you can see on here the licensing for the good year. Um, just looking around the rest of the box, I don't think there's much else to see. On the other side here gives a little depiction of the uh, etched parts. And I'm just going to turn this around so I can read it. And we've got some schematics of the uh, of the Andretti car there. Um, and again, it just goes on about the kit. So 112th highly scaled detail plastic model. I've more mentioned the length. Incorporates this moving coil spring suspension. It's just repeating what's on the front there. Exactly verbatim, word for word. So, let's have a look inside the box. As I say, quite an expensive kit, so needs to be pretty good. And we'll just go unpack this quickly and then we'll go back through and look at some details. So we've got the chrome, uh, looks like the wheels there, and obviously the intakes for the engine, all on a chrome sheet there. These look like body parts. Again, more body components. Rear wing by the look of it on there, and some of the bulkheads for in the body. Rather set of wheels there. Suspension components and steering rack. As I say, it does have a working steering on this car. 
Got uprights here for the uh, the wheels by the look of it and more suspension components. Bucket seat and various other little bits and pieces. I guess they're for the seat belt runs, I'm not sure. More body parts. Looks like bits of the gearbox, various other engine components. Then we've got uh, some of the ducting that it spoke about in the build or even exhaust, I guess. And uh, yeah, some other bits on there. Engine components, not looking too bad actually. They're looking pretty good. Uh, underneath the subframe, you can get an appreciation of the size of the model now, with that being the width. We'll come back to that one in a minute. Then uh, here's your brake assemblies and your cool impacts. Our photo etch parts, they look rather nice. And then on here, this is our decal sheet and seat belts. And then just having a quick look in the bottom of the box. So we've got uh, Tamiya Tech Tips. So it gives uh, some uh, hints and tips on how to put these kits together in the right way. Come back to the instructions in a minute. And then in the bottom of the box here is the usual you know, information about this kit. Um, be careful, don't cut yourself, don't leave it with children, that kind of thing. So, make a start and have a look at the instructions first. Um, so, over here, a lot of information about the Lotus 78. Again, I'm not going to repeat all that was on the outside of the box. And I'm just going to flick through the instructions rather quickly. So, it talks here about the recommended tools. We've got the ply and the decals and the information there. Metal transfers, photo etch parts, just giving you general guidance. And then going through, I'm going to... Obviously, I haven't studied this. It's the first time I've opened it, so I'm just going to talk through what I see on the page. So we've got assembly of some of the chassis components here. We've got the pedal box by the look of it going in. Um, more chassis components. Here's our steering rack going together, dropping into the car. And then here, this is uh, reverse tank and battery. So this assembly goes together and drops in into the bottom of the, uh, the chassis there. And you can see the paint colours required. We'll go through the paint colours in a moment. At the top here, you can see the steering rack dropping into the chassis. And then here's the assembly of the, the coilover springs, front wishbones going in. And then we've got attaching the bulkhead. So this is the bulkhead assembly. Seat belt, showing you how to put the seat belt together and mount that into the bucket seat. Then the cockpit comes together. So we've got the steering wheel, the obviously the shaft going down for our working steering. So if you turn the steering wheel on this model, the wheels will turn, the bucket seat drops in. Radiators, radiator assembly, you can see here, and the pipes that run around the car. And then we've got some body components and the roll, roll bar on the top here. Uh, assembly of the engine, looks a nice complex engine, very, very detailed on there, looks very good. And then over here, the injection system, I'm just making sure this is on the camera, I might just pull it down a little bit. So you can see the coil pack and uh, the injection system there. Then the throttle plate, so here's your inlets, your air inlets and the uh, air covers that's over the top on the top of the engine. Number 17, tra transmission uh, assembly. So yeah, the uh, transaxle putting together there and then the rear brake discs, the assembly here with the photo etched uh, outer parts from the bits that you see. This one, the final one, 19 here is attaching the brake discs. Then over here, the rear stabiliser bars are attached onto the transaxle. Um, then we've got attaching the transmission. Um, rear uprights with the springs again. Exhausts come together here. And then mounting the engine onto the chassis. Over here, oil cooler. And air intakes over here that get assembled. Air intakes mounted to the, the body. Then we've got the front uprights and again the assembly of the discs. They drop onto the car, as you see here, number 29. Then at the top here, uh, transmission oil cooler assembly dropped onto the car. And then uh, the oil lines, very, very detailed, this kit. The oil lines on there. Assembly of the wheels looks quite nice. Body components onto the chassis, which uh, again, you can see with the, I mentioned the pontoons. You see here with the upside down wing and these close on the side. The end plates on the nose cowl look very, very detailed, very nice. 
and then the final components which is the upper body that you can lift off if you remember it said you can lift those off to see the detail inside and then in terms of the livery we've got Mario Andretti for the 1977 Grand Prix uh, Gunnar Nielsen 1977 British Grand Prix and I'm just seeing if they've got yes they have Ronnie Peterson in the 1978 British Grand Prix livery so there's three different liveries you can choose from for this kit Right, let's go back through a few of these uh, components in detail. So start with the photo etch parts. And as always, these are superb. I mean, the brake lifts look fantastic. Just bring them up to the camera, you can see the detail here. But the bit that catches my eye is the uh, the grills here. They are actually all photo etched out. It's not just scanned onto the surface. So these, uh, when you cut them out of the sheet, they actually are individual bits of metal there. You can see, you see the seat belt tongues and buckles at the top here. So yeah, indeed, very, very detailed. And obviously these are the uh, end plates that they spoke about for the wings. And you see all the little rivet holes for the uh, adjustment of the aerofoils on those. So photo etch parts, really, really nice, really well done. Um, in terms of the decals, I did open this up on, just to show this, uh, turn this over. This was up the other way originally, so these are sort of detailed uh, Team Lotus stickers that go around the car and you can see uh, Andretti Nielsen and the different advertising on there um, obviously the main decals I'm not going to take the sheet off but they're in in here we've got obviously the Goodyear and you can see the uh, Olympus cameras and the different numbers that go on the car so as I say so as it says you know there's three different uh, configurations of the car that you can uh, make this kit into and then on the back here it got some nice finishing touches for the dials really nice detail there and obviously the belts that you can put together to uh, finish this kit very nicely well, i'm going to slide that back in there before i lose it just pop that down there now the seat let's lift this out of the packet and so we can put the detail on there bucket seat's rather nicely made and it's a sort of a it's a different plastic to the others. This is all sort of a rubberized material. I'm just trying to see if I can see what uh, material it's made out of. It's like a polythene type material. You can see it's very, very flexible and very um, malleable. So uh, yeah, it doesn't actually say what it is on there, unfortunately. Oh yes, it does. Hang on a minute. Let me see if I can get the light. Oh, PE, polyurethane, yeah. So yes, it does say on there, yeah, polyurethane. So yeah, you can see you can see how pliable it is now, flexible. So that's rather nice. I mean, that's the thing with these big kits when you you know <laughs> they do cost a lot of money, but you do get different materials in there to give the right texture and the feel for the parts. Um, in terms of the wheels, really really nicely moulded. Let's take these out and have a good look at them. I'm not going to open all the packets because uh, I don't want to lose the parts, but uh, these are very very nice and obviously. They've got a little lettering, I'm afraid my eyesight's not good enough to read what that says around there. But um, you can see the detail and how well the uh, moulding has come through. There's not a blemish on any of the wheels looking through on the chroming. And uh, obviously the air intakes on these can look fantastic when they're on the back of the car. This is one that I do plan to build at some point um, when I get, get time to sit down and put a kit together. Right, body parts, let's go through these. So this first moulding, now there are knit and weld lines on here. Now I'm sure you, you're going to paint this if you're doing this type of kit. You know, you're going to spend the time and probably airbrush these parts. But there are there are little knit lines on there, but I can't feel them. So I don't think on this one you're going to be, you're going to be filling and sanding, but you will definitely be painting. Um, I'm just trying to get this in the light. But there's one running through here, one running down the back of the wing there, and uh, yeah, they're not they're not coming through to the surface, but they're they're definitely there, definitely present. The flow lines in the plastic. Suspension components here. I'm not going to take this one out because it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see the wishbones and uh, bits of material in there. ABS can. This is that ABS material. It's so quite durable. Um, Quite a strong bit of material there for those parts. This one is another, uh, uh, lots of components on here, lots of wishbones and uh, suspension bits. Again, I suspect this is probably ABS. Yes, it is. 
Oh no, sorry, this one is, yeah, so just looking on here, it does say PS, so it's polystyrene, these components. Um, as I say, I'm not going to get all these packets out because uh, it doesn't really show any more than you can already see. So lots of little components in there. Onto one of the uh, engine component packs. Uh, just see what this material is. Again, polystyrene, but in grey. You probably see the, the bits of the transaxle on here and various other components. But uh, yeah, as I say, we won't go into too much detail with that. Uh, the engine itself, I thought I'd get, thought I'd get this one out because it's really nice moulding. A um, lot of different bits of detail on here, which is uh, really great to see. And I should think this looks fantastic when it's all, all together. Um, material, polystyrene again in grey. And uh, yeah, very, very nicely done. And obviously you can see here with the sort of air intakes, I'm guessing this is one of the air intakes. When you get your uh, photo etch parts over there, that's going to look great. Put that back in. All right, more body components. Let's have a look at these. They look pretty good. Not really a great deal to see on there. And they are modelled in, again in polystyrene. But obviously in black this time. So no real blemishes on there. Oh, there is a big mark across there. Yeah, that's going to need a little bit of work. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. If I get, try and get the light on it. But running right the way across here, there's a, a, a flow front. It's actually on this one as well. And there's another one on here. That one I can't feel, that one I can, just about. So that may show, that may need a little bit of work on the paint, but I mean, that's why we buy these kits though, isn't it? I mean, you're not expecting just to glue it together. You're gonna spend time really finishing it and uh, you know, trying to get perfection on there. This is the bulkhead components. Uh, again, polystyrene in gray. Uh, again, you're still going to be painting these. You can see the, the colour just running through here. You can see the knit line running through there. So that will need doing, and the same with here. You can see the flow fronts and the, the material moulding. Exhaust components. Um, I won't take this out of the packet. It's all sealed in there. You can see here, um, not really much to say about those. Again, a polystyrene part. Um, and then finally, on these bits, another polystyrene part. You see here the wheel assemblies and the uh, brake discs, and then obviously, yeah, air intakes, various air intakes here. Again, you're going to need to paint these. You can see the marks through them, um, and, and then you put your photo etch wheel on top of those. Brake discs look pretty good, or brake calipers, should I say? Sorry, brake calipers here in there, and obviously, this is all your piping that goes around the engine, so they're pretty good. Um, Another set of body parts. This again is your your nose. So these are very very visible parts. They are going to need they are going to need finishing. But uh, the moulding quality is really superb on these ones. Very very good. Um, there is there is quite a mark on that one in the middle. Um, quite difficult to. Uh, hopefully the lights catch and you'll see it on the camera. But there's a mark through the middle of these. But again, you know, it's only a little bit of finishing. You may need to a little bit of filling, a little bit of sanding just to get them perfectly smooth. If you're worried that much, we've got the under tray. Now this one, you can obviously see quite a lot of knit lines running through this, a lot of flow fronts. And yeah, not such a clever mold in that one. That one is very, very pronounced. And uh, yeah, although it's under the car, if you're a protectionist, you will need to finish that. That's not not too brilliant, actually. Um, and obviously, you see them running through here and through here. So there's a little bit of work that would need doing on those. But the moulding generally looks really good, high quality. It's just these these flow fronts where you know they've got uh, the material flows in and it flows from here and from here and where you get the two flow fronts meet, you you get a cold bit with the two material flows join and if you don't get that right you can get a little bit of a dip in the molding so and then finally the wheel pack so the wheels are actually really nicely done um on the size of molded in the side it does say uh goodyear um which obviously in the kit you know you'd probably put some paint down drop them down onto it and it'd pick out the lettering for you 
um, both of those. A little bit more pronounced on the rear wheels, so let's pull that out. Um, if I try and try to get, get, catch the light on it, you see here, good year running around the top. I'll just bring it up close to the camera in case that angle works. Um, Moulding's generally pretty good. A um, little bit of finishing, I guess, on this centre seam if you're worried about it. You know, that won't take a lot to finish that off. And then these, you've got uh, wiring, wiring and hosing to complete the model. And then finally, indeed, the springs, the coilover springs that come in a little packet there. Right, well, I'll just wrap this one up then. So that's what's inside the kit. As I say, these are, the RRP on this is £110. I have seen them around £90, so it is a very expensive kit. Having gone through it, I think there's enough bits in there to uh, warrant the price and the size of the model. There's lots of detail in there. Love the photo etch parts, love the decals, and obviously the separately fitted seatbelt bits. That's what you're paying for. I think it looks superb when it's done, um, but obviously it's, uh, it is an expensive, uh, expensive kit to do. So anyway, if you enjoyed that, please do give it a thumbs up and do check out the channel. There's lots of other videos on there and also some other videos of uh, unboxing of model kits and things if you, you, know, if you like your model kits. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll say thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.